Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's going to be another one of those rambly type videos where I have an opinion nobody agrees with, or maybe in this case everybody will agree with me, and mostly this topic today that I'm going to be talking about is a little pointless because I, I don't see it as controversial at all, but we will uh, talk about it anyways. So, mainly my goal today is to talk about the reason why Firefox still exists. I'm a Firefox user. So let's switch over to you can see so you can see some Firefox. This is Firefox. And I have it, you know, customized the way I look what I like it to look and all that stuff. And I like it because it's open source and because they can mess around with the user interface and all sorts of different reasons. But let's look at this here. This is the since 2009, these are the the market share of browsers worldwide. And this is Chrome. This right here is Firefox. And that pretty much tells you everything you need to know. I mean, the nearest gap here is, uh, shock shockingly, Safari. It appears to be number two, probably because of mobile. I'm guessing because of the iPhone. I, I'm betting these count mobile statistics as well. Um, the point is, is that Firefox is, and also ran at this point, is not competitive in terms of people actually using it at all. And uh, that's okay, I guess, because, I mean, Linux itself is an also ran. Uh, I mean, nobody uses Linux on the desktop. I mean, they use Linux in the server areas. It's one there, and it's pretty much one on phones, but nobody really knows that Android is Linux. They just know that it's Android. Um uh, so the question is, so we have several questions we should talk about today. First, is there anything Firefox can do to increase the market share? Um, second, should they even try to increase their market share? It, just because you're not number one at something doesn't mean you're not good at it or successful. Uh, number three uh do is there a point in the future where we can foresee that Chrome fails? Um, because right now, everything uses the Chromium-based engine. Um, and basically, everything uses the WebKit engine, uh, which is actually was open sourced by uh, Apple ages ago. But here are the things that use the Chromium-based engine. There's Chromium. That's the open source project. There's Google Chrome from Google, which is the number one browser. There's Microsoft Edge. There's Opera, Vivaldi, Brave, Blisk. I've never even heard of that browser before. Uh, Calibri, never heard of that one before either. Uh, Epic Browser. And notice the UIs of these. Most of these UIs look exactly the same. Iron Browser on Google Chromium. That looks like Chrome from like five years ago. I bet you that's secure. Uh, and then they're calling this vendor specific implementations. I don't know what that means. A vast secure browser, Amazon Silk, Samsung Internet Browser, Yandex Browser, Kihu 360 Secure Browsers, Torch Browser, and Komo the Komodo Dragon Browser. Okay. And then they have another list of ones here they're called they're called also rans cock cock which is an interesting name for a browser falcon X, xvast polarity the world chrome never well i mean these these no, no, nobody's ever heard of any of these things but these all run on the same web engine that is controlled almost 100 percent by google yes chromium is open source yes chromium is open source but chrome Google has like half the seats on the board of the Chromium Foundation or whatever it's called. Um, I, I don't know the exact number, but it's it's a lot. They control Chromium. What Google wants in Chromium, Google gets. The only company that had a chance of dethroning Google in terms of market share in browsers was Microsoft. And they chose not to do so. Um, mainly because they had been failing at it for a while. They came out with Edge as a replacement based on their own uh, engine, and nobody used it. 
And it, I mean, it wasn't very good. I mean, that's part of the reason why nobody used it, but also because by that time, everybody already had Chrome. There was no reason to have a browser that was basically locked into Microsoft services. Um, which is weird because, I mean, everybody uses Microsoft Surface services. Everybody has an Office account uh, or a Hotmail account or something. So it, it wasn't the uh, necessity of having a, an account that was holding people back. Um, so Microsoft obviously didn't ha feel that they could go through and supplant or, you know, overtake Chrome as the number one browser because that would be their goal because they'd want to be you know successful. So going back to Firefox, Firefox is the only real true open source browser that people use. Um, if you notice this uh, graph, there's no other open source browsers on here. Real, I mean, yes, I know Chromium is open source, but people don't use Chromium. They use Chrome, which is not open source. Um, there's nothing like cute browser or any of those really niche browsers that are on, you know, Linux users might use. Firefox is it. If we want a open web, Firefox is our only hope. And this kind of transitions into the question of can Firefox ever overtake? And I don't think the way Firefox is currently ran, they can overtake it because most of the vast majority of the money that they get comes from Google. I don't think that they're incentivized at Firefox right now to ever even consider Google a competitor. They don't want to. Um, really, up until the time that f I think it was Firefox 70. It might have been Firefox 60. It was one of the the round numbers. When that came out, it was called Quantum or something like that. And... Prior to that, Firefox was terrible. I mean, it was slow, it was clunky, it took up entirely too many resources on your computer, and that's that was during the time where it went from like 28, 20, 30 percent, and then just continued to plummet because Firefox was terrible. I mean, people used Firefox a lot, you know, in 2010, 2011, it started going down, and that's because Chrome, it turns out, is really good. Right, and Firefox at that point was really bad. And even in 2018, I think it was 2018, when the Firefox, when when, Mo when Mozilla went through and redid Firefox and made it faster and made the interface more modern and all that stuff, they didn't weren't able to gain back anything. They were able to stop the bleeding a little bit. They're now stuck around what looks to be. I'm reading a chart which you know is always hard but it looks to be around 10 maybe 9 or 10 percent of market share and that's where they're probably going to stay as long as you know nothing unforeseen happens and it doesn't tank further um so i like i said i don't think that they're incentivized to go through and and compete with google but i also don't think that they're capable of doing so because what could they change to get people to use firefox uh, they would have to really where they would have to succeed is in mobile because most people use their browser on their mobile phone. And in order to do that, they'd have to make deals with Android carriers that don't use Google services uh, to be, be the default browser or at least to be installed. Um, Google has this whole tie in thing. So if you want Google Play services, which includes the Play Store, so all your apps, you have to use Google Chrome and you know google search on your phone, your devices that's how the manufacturing process and the samsung's and and uh you know motorola's of the world uh have to deal with google they have to those things are all tied together if you want one you have to have them all um and that's one of the ways that google has got this huge market share is they've tied google chrome to everything else that they do so google chrome comes installed on every android's device and that's um you know that's what they what people use because that's what's installed so if mozilla wanted firefox to make a headway into that they'd have to make a deal with some mobile phone manufacturer to have firefox pre-installed 
Um, and they have shown no interest in doing that. Um, and whether that's because they just don't want to or because they know that they get all of their money from Google. So, and if they decide to try to start actually start competing with Google on mobile phones, uh, they might, Google might decide to take that $400 million away. Who knows? Um, so that kind of, I mean, that's really the answer to whether or not they can. And if, so the question is whether or not they should. So if, uh, they, let's just say they decided to throw away the, their connection to Google and try to become less reliant on that Google money, which they've tried. They're not. It doesn't seem like they've tried very hard. Um, all their efforts efforts to make money are like a, a VPN that nobody was ever going to use. I mean, <laughs> just I mean, nobody was ever going. That was never going to be big enough to replace four hundred million dollars. Um, I mean, that's just realistic. Um, you know, they've tried to put ads and they, they you know they bought Pocket and they put. You know, it, they put ads like on the, the start, the new tab page and people freaked the fuck out. I mean, <laughs> so I mean, every, every little uh, effort they've made to make money outside of Google has com completely failed. So we can see that they really don't, don't want to. But if they were to go through and throw the Google money away, should should they tr I mean, should they do that? Should they try to overtake to increase their market share? This is where I'm kind of, uh, I kind of split because I can see it both ways. The Google money is really good money. I mean, and their C, uh, Firefox, Mo Mozilla does not spend that money very well. Uh, they pay their executives way too much money. Um, somebody did the math or something like that with that $400 million. Each developer there would get like $300,000, you know, you know, for, um, a salary each year. And they don't obviously get that because most of the money actually goes to the, the the executives, which is you know not all that great or more not all that morally great, I guess. Um, so I can see that they don't want to throw away that money because why would they? I mean, that's basically free money. I mean, they they literally have to do nothing <laughs> for that. They just pay the their developers to continue chugging chugging along, uh, nothing to rock the boat. Uh, in turn, in the you know browser war, browser wars or whatever. So, I can see that point of view. On the other hand, as an open source enthusiast, I want to see more people use open source software. And hmm, I would like to see my Mozilla be a little bit more forceful in their marketing efforts, taking some maybe taking some of that four hundred million dollars while it's still there, and. And getting a carrier deal to put Firefox on a phone, you know, instead of working on these niche uh, projects like the VPN or Firefox OS or whatever it was back in the day, you know, things that were just never really going to have a chance to be success monetarily successful. Uh, take some of the mo Google money while it's still there, and you know, try at least a little to go through and you know reclaim some market share, in, you know, in mobile or whatever. So, those are my thoughts. Uh, I, I've rambled on a little bit too, you know, too long on this. Uh, I like Firefox. I'm going to continue to use micro, uh, use Firefox. Um, but there's going to become a day. I feel that it's just not going to be prudent to continue to use Firefox because the, the question is, why does this all matter? I mean, Firefox is chuggling along and exists. It's fine. But really, with the way this is here, this market share as it is, developers focus on Chromium-based browsers. So it's probably like three or four times a week I go to a website in Firefox that just doesn't work. Um, the other day, it was I was buying Christmas presents on Swiss Colony. Their website doesn't work in Firefox because they've not tested it in Firefox. It only works in Chrome. Um, and that's going to be the problem with everything on the internet being optimized for Chrome because everybody uses Chrome. That's what developers are going to be targeting. And that means Firefox is going to be slowly left behind, uh, in web standards because some websites, important websites, I mean, what happens when Firefox decides or Facebook decides they're going to stop optimizing for, uh, 
Firefox. I mean, everybody goes to Facebook. It could happen. And and that's the reason why this matters. Uh, is because if Firefox can't increase their browser share just a little bit to the point where developers will care you know, more, um, because right now I'm pretty sure they don't care pretty much at all, um, then you're going to continue to see websites that you can't visit in Firefox because they don't meet the same standards. Okay, so that's it. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed this video or you have thoughts, uh, make sure you leave comments and subscribe and leave thumbs up and thumbs down and all those interactions that are just the typical YouTube fare. I'm not going to tell you to smash anything because monitors are expensive. Anyways, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.